Horse Cafe podcast where we demystify, detangle, and hopefully detox uh, the legal process um, that goes on after a separation with the experts in the relationship property world. On the home team, uh, we have Shelley Fennell and I'm Tyna Henderson. We are partners in law and friends in life. I think that's an apt description. Um, and we uh, help people, work with people going through a separation uh, to navigate what is usually a, a pretty complex and bewildering process. Uh, just to introduce Shelley, she, Shelley was doing relationship property work and then went through her own separation. And uh, I, I work in this area of law because it feels like important work to be doing. And um, it's an area where lawyers are actually making a few breakthroughs and um, you know, that makes it a pretty exciting area of law. Um, today's episode is DIY Relationship Property Division. Um, and uh, so we're looking at how the law divides up your assets when you separate or in the event of a separation and whether that's something that you can do yourself. So today we have um, a veteran of uh, more than 50 years in the family court. Uh, in fact, he worked in family law before there was such a thing as the family court. In fact, um, yeah, he's appeared many times in the High Court, in the Court of Appeal. Uh, he's an experienced mediator, counsel for child. His clients know him for the empathy and dignity with which he receives them and for his ability to explain complex uh, concepts simply. Judges and colleagues know him for his mental agility, his prodigious knowledge of the law, and his rock-solid ethics and focus on the well-being of those he represents. He runs a large, successful provincial law firm, and the world knows him as Stuart Henderson. Shelley knows him as the senior partner in our firm, and I know him as Dad. Uh, and I actually know him because he represented me on my own one as well. Yeah. So it <laughs> comes with my high recommendations. So Stuart, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. The first segment um, in our podcast is where we get our distinguished guests. Um, we get, ask them to pull a random question out of the uh, hat, box, bucket. Um, so half of these questions are carefully thought out uh, ponderances on uh, the nature of the human condition and half of them were made up by Shelley. So you just never know what you're going to get. Um, so if you can reach in and... Uh, and that and can I, be your first question of the day. I guess as time goes on, questions from outside. Oh, yeah, 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 that would be cool. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, what can you got read you, it out? What got you into the family court, and what has kept you there so long? I, mm, gee whiz, I think it's the, it's the privilege of being able to help people with a problem that is likely to be the worst and most stressful problem in their lives, the end of a relationship. Um, psychologists, a psychologist once told me that in the, in, in the, the stress-loaded situations you get into in life, um, the, the one with the most stress is death of a child. You can understand that. Yeah. To my amazement, second was the end of a relationship. So mm -hmm. it's the most second most stressful thing that's going to happen to you uh, to certainly be, to, is. to be Absolutely. the to be the person to hear uh, and work through and after 52 years be able to give advice and have a lot of confidence in the advice I'm giving I find that's just such I'm so I'm so lucky and uh, uh, privileged to have the chance to try and use so I guess that's that's my answer. Yeah. That's yeah. my answer. Well, how, yeah. how I got into it? Uh, I was in a general practice in Wellington where that was one of the things I had to do. And uh, I was, my initial instruction when I came out of law school, knowing very little about it, any of this stuff in terms of prag pragmatism, um, the boss gave me a bit of paper and it was a, the firm's with the compliments slip. And he said, what you do is they come in off the street and they say they want, this is 1970, they want a separation. And you write down separation agreement, $25. This is 1970. Mm. And you give it to them. And most of them will go away and reconcile and decide they don't need a separation. <laughs> the ones who come back. This is come, what your boss said. This is what my boss <laughs> said. Wow. Anyway, um, so it, it, it was as haphazard as that that mm. got me into it. But again, 
uh, it was the the the, the honour of being trusted to hear people out, to hear their um, stresses and worries, and over mm. time be able to help. Yeah, apply whatever skills you've picked up to actually make that better. Yep. Mm. Yep. That's. Um, and not always succeed, and recognise right. when things have gone wrong and be able to think of why they've gone wrong and do better next time. It's called practicing law and mm. I've been doing it 52 years and I'm still practicing. Still practicing, yeah. Mm. Hopefully nice. getting better all the time. Nice one. Okay, so um, the next segment um, to structure these things a little bit is, uh, it's called the essentials. And as you'd expect, uh, this is where we do a type five on the basics of, um, of the topic. And today it's dividing relationship Property or DIY, relationship property divisions. I've got a, a one, two, three. And you and will be able minutes, to. Right. And five, five less minutes. than five. <laughs> yeah, sorry, and so I'm starting now. Type five. So the first thing right. that happens when you separate, um, uh, you need to go about dividing, extricating um, your finances and your, and your assets. So looking at your assets, the way it works is first you classify, uh, classify your assets as either relationship property or separate property. Relationship property is things like the family home, it's the, fam the mortgage on the family home, it's your car, it's most of what's in the house, uh, it's your Kiwi saver and your savings built up during the relationship, uh, it's uh, anything that you acquired with your wages and salary during the relationship. Basically, uh, the phrase I've heard you saying is, it's the fruits of your labour while uh, you were together, in addition to those other special assets like family home, etc. Separate property, uh, includes things like assets that you had before you got together, it includes inheritances, gifts, distributions from a trust, as long as you keep them separate. So once, there's actually a third class of property, which is trust property, we're not going to talk about that today because it's a massive um, topic and we are going to talk about it a lot um, in other podcasts because it's really interesting too and it often comes into um, divisions. So once you've classified, sorted things into piles, uh, next, you uh, relationship property gets divided either 50-50 or if there's some rebalancing to be done. For example, if somebody has taken a, uh, a non-financial role, somebody's been the homemaker, the child raiser, and as a result isn't earning as much, and the other was a career person, um, then there can be a rebalancing. And, and so the, the relationship property pile gets divided unequally. Um, separate property is generally kept separate and you take it with you, but uh, increases in the value of separate property during the relationship might may be shared or will be shared if the parties have contributed to that increase. So with money or with effort. Um, your classic is a business started before the relationship that both parties put time and effort into. Or a rental home. Or a rental you've home. Worked on and yep. gone and done the gardens yep. and mowed the or lawn. Or you're topping up the mortgage. Yep. yep. So separate property isn't uh, isn't necessarily separate. So yeah, that's my type five, and I just want to say it's like a pavlova. If you like food analogies, is the, the best one I have thought of. Um, it looks simple, but uh, it's actually, there are some pretty complicated parts and it's really easy to turn the cream into butter. So um, <laughs> yeah, that's my type five on relationship property division. And the caveat, because there's always got to be a caveat, is what? It's a big topic. There's no substitute yeah. for hearing from your, a lawyer who you've talked to face to face about your own situation. Um, yeah, and yeah, the devil was, is in the detail, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's never quite as, well, sometimes it is as easy as that, and we'll get on to that and, and some real life sort of stories about when it's worked. We've got other episodes you can listen to if there's a, um, something that you want to dig deeper into, and there's an article that goes along. You'll see it with the link to this, um, this podcast that you can read and get some more information. So, now we get into the guts of it, which is... Uh, entitled stuff we find interesting for one can, can, can i jump right yeah back into, have into we missed it? something anything? no when you yeah. when you said it, there can be a rebalancing yep where one person has been the career person one person been the home person the rebalancing is in keeping with the whole idea of the act and it's a, been in force for 48 years so it should be right down in our dna but it's not mm. the rebalancing is because the person bringing in the money not only is the person bringing in the money not necessarily going to do better because of that than the person who stays home, looks after the kids and keeps the house more or less tidy, um, their contributions are equal. So the principle is equality. 
except in that situation which you were talking about where the rebalancing can be if one of the fruits of the relationship is that the person who went out and worked now has a career that earns him a million a year. And or the, her. Or, or her, thank you. <laughs> I said person, but I, I lost my, ge <laughs> my, my gender equality pretty damn quickly, didn't I? Um, and if the other person, conversely, who may have started out as a trainee teacher or something and then had children, has totally lost any earning power. And the rebalancing can be that the person who's got the power, the economic power, has to provide from their half of the relationship property something to balance up the other person's lack of economic power because it's mm. going to take them a number of years to be retrained mm. to get back in the workforce. But it all goes back to the, the search for equality mm. between the, yeah. the cup, couple equity, once they're no longer. Equity doesn't always mean equality. Sorry. I guess. Yes, is yeah, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. Describing yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, section 15, is a, that's the section we're talking about that we're going to have a whole other podcast yep. um, on that because it's such a, um, that was one of those moments which made me excited to be in relation to property law because. Um, but yeah. I love that whole, the whole basis, which I, is, mm. is quite surprising or yeah. interesting about the act is that all contributions are equal. Mm. So I think that's just yeah. something you, we apply to all of it yeah. all of the time, right? Okay, so well, I think we should, given the topic of the podcast, we'll start off with the big question. Is it really possible to do your own relationship property division? Of course it is. Okay, ah, okay. Oh, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah. I'm surprised. But <laughs> <laughs> to have, to do it, there's, there's degrees of doing it yourself. You can do it yourself agree that this is what's going to happen, handshake, go, put it into effect, go mm. your own ways. Yeah. Um, you can write out the agreement, you can go to a lawyer after you've reached the agreement. Mm. So yes, you can, you, you can do the whole negotiation yourselves, but a negotiation that's not legally binding, and there's two elements to the legally binding, can be unpicked later on down the track. It can be done and it can work, but it needs uh, it needs goodwill and it needs l trust. And one of the things that's happened in that relationship mm. is that the goodwill has disappeared and they've separated. Mm. And if you don't recognize that, hey, there might not be all the goodwill and trust that we need around here, mm. it's going to come apart because you can enter into your agreement, but that agreement is likely to be unpicked. Uh, and the only defense best defence against the agreement you've reached and decided on as fair uh, is its fairness. And fairness is not what you may think. Mm -hmm. Fairness is what the law has laid down and lawyers know how the courts will apply that principle of fairness. And I've talked about yeah. one of the parts of it which is the contributions are equal even if one's producing heaps of money and the other is just wiping children's noses and looking after them. Just. Just, yeah. sorry. Quite, quite. <laughs> Said with irony. The irony of a father of six and grandparent of 18. Fairness <laughs> is in the eyes of the law, not in your eyes mm. as you negotiate the separation, the, the division, at the worst time of your lives. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, the best way of and, having... And, and maybe starting from a point of actually misunderstanding the law. You know, that 50-50 sharing is something that is pretty... Um, burned into everybody's souls out there but it's not actually as you say it's not the law the law is more nuanced yep and i would say that that uh, i would say you need another ingredient to be able to do it yourself and that's mm. simplicity i think it i think it has to be a simple si situation mm. it, it, right like it, a, yeah. a straightforward to make it stick yeah to make it stick yeah, yeah. because yeah. It, it, what what you might agree at the moment the one party may be feeling guilty as hell yeah. because his conduct the, the, can I use the gender there <laughs> when it's the there, misconduct? There, because there, their, their misconduct has yeah. caused the end of it and the children are unhappy and everyone's unhappy and it's the end of everyone's dreams and they say, you take the house, uh, you're going to look after the children, uh, I'll go and earn money and pay maintenance and so forth. Well, give it yeah. a month, but it, it, if, even after a year, just imagine what's happened. The guy's gone off, forgive my gender One bias, person. One person's gone off with the capital stayed with the capital, one person's gone off um, determined to make their way themselves and, and believing that that's for the benefit. 
A year later, that person is finding that he's got no traction because he's got no, because they've got no capital. Uh, and they've got a new partner who says, we need to buy a house and you've gifted everything to your yeah. former partner. Yeah. Uh, and, and so what you agree in the stress of that time has got to stick. And the thing that is most likely to make it stick when one of the partners thinks again and goes to a lawyer and says, I've entered into this agreement, can I get out of it? That lawyer's going to unpick it. And the lawyer, if the lawyer comes up against what is basically fair under the Act, mm. is going to say, hopefully, I could, we could challenge it, there are these things wrong with it, um, but basically you've got a fair agreement. Let's not spend money mm. on something, mm. let's not cause the up, upheaval. And we should have a separate thing on how do you find a good lawyer, um, mm. because lawyers can become uh, part of the problem, mm -hmm. but the best protection, even in a complex situation, mm. is if it's fair. Yeah, it's and fairness fair. is in the eye of the law, so what I would say to you is, if you're gonna do your own deal, go and find out what the law is. There's, there's, there's tactical and there's practical reasons for it. The tactical reasons are, you need to know what you're negotiating with and what your power is and what your leverage is. Um, because otherwise, if you've got some misconceptions, mm. you might enter into an agreement thinking this, yeah. and then if you find out later it's not true. You get too far down the track, yeah. and it's, it seems awfully unfair to say, oh, you know, actually 50-50 isn't, yeah. Only get into it with some knowledge of what you're likely, what, mm. what might happen if you're in court. Lawyers can tell you that. But then don't, my advice would be, and, es and especially because of the segment we're in, don't then do your negotiation through the lawyer. Find out from the lawyer how your negotiation should mm. be going or, or what That's the division a, yeah, should what be. What the law would and say. And then, then deal with it direct. See if you can. Yep. Yeah. When would you say you should get help? What I was going to say about your earlier comment was that when you've separated, it, the first one of the first things is division of property. Quite often people are worrying about division of property when they're thinking about separating. Mm. And so it's sort of a blurry uh, stage, mm. and yeah, uh, and and that's the stage when you need to know what's going to happen because if you're in a relationship which has got unsatisfactory aspects of it, um, and you're thinking I'd do better moving out or moving mm. moving the other person out, <laughs> yeah, um, you need to then you what's need what's to know gonna what's going to happen. Yeah. You need to know how it's going to affect the kids, yeah. uh, and that's a whole different issue. But you. Your, your knowledge of who's going to end up with what. And what will, happens with the finance. Will, will help yeah. you make that decision. And, and going back to whether you can do it yourself, and my, my suggestion that it needs goodwill and, uh, and trust, if you've got so much goodwill and trust between you that you can do the deal on a handshake, why are you separating? <laughs> <laughs> don't go to a lawyer, go to a counsellor and find out, A, what's wrong with you that you don't recognise Loyalty and trust of that degree are, are, yeah. are golden. Yeah, it's and, really interesting. And B, okay, should I be doing this at all? Not a matter of counting the dollars that you're going to end up with, but looking at the emotional aspects, the, the yeah. life aspects of it. So I think that things starts earlier than when yeah. you've reached the stage yeah, where true. you have to divide it yeah. up. And legal advice from a, from a lawyer who's giving good, balanced advice that's what's golden because yeah. it enables you to go ahead uh, and and yeah, not no. end up with a horrible situation. Well, better chances of not ending up with a horrible yeah. situation at the end. And I've had situations where clients have done it themselves. They've maybe written up a handwritten agreement or, a, you know, they haven't had a lawyer sign it off under the Act. And it's all very amicable. And then a year later, oh. someone wants to buy a house. Yep. And they go to the bank and they say, I want to buy a house. And the bank says, yes, no problem, you've got equity. Uh, all we need is a separation agreement. Mm. Yeah. And that, yeah. that can be a huge shock to people that they ha it has been amicable. They may even have an agreement that's signed mm. between the two of them. But the bank will say, mm. it's got to be witnessed by yeah. a lawyer. It's yeah. got to be an agreement under the Act. Yeah, and that thing about it's got to be fair. If you yeah. hear from someone at a dinner party is often a way that it seems to come up. At, at the dinner party they say, oh, 
you know, why did you <laughs> do that agreement? This is what, you know, I've, yeah. I got sued, you know, three years ago. Um, I'm pretty sure this is what, you know. What's yeah, his it, name down the road is the worst yeah. person to be getting legal advice from, but what's yeah. his name down the road? Unless you might, live down the road unless from you us. Live, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 What are some of the traps that people fall into when they do try and, try and do it themselves? One, one is, 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 we've already referred to, is having a false sense of, um, of needing to be generous, yeah. whether because of a guilty conscience or because I have heard exhausted. a guilty conscience last for 12 months. Yeah, that's a, that's <laughs> yeah, a good line. I think acting, wanting to act quite, ha quite hastily can be yep. a similar problem. Yeah. That, yeah. They act in haste, repent at leisure Absolutely. kind of yeah. scenario. Yeah. That part of sometimes what we need to do we is to try and slow it down. And yeah. And while you want it all to be covered off, actually it's better if you take a little bit of time yeah. and get it right because that agreement yeah. stands. I think, it has, I think it needs to be slowed down. You, that's the, that was the point of the psychologist's advice, that when you're in the most stressful situation mm. that hopefully you're ever going to have to mm. cope with, mm. not the great time to be making decisions, no. not yeah. the great time to be surging on with things. Um, and um, it, it, it's the time to go and talk about your relationship. It's yeah. the time to go and get advice be sure about yourself yeah. and yeah. and w whether you're cracking up or whether you're thinking straight and so forth and then get get assistance in in talking about the relationship because especially if there's kids uh, one of the worst things that can happen is a relationship end without a reckoning without and understanding and and, and yeah. just ongoing yeah. anger and mm. resentment mm. and revenge so sorting yourself out and sorting your relationship out from mm. the point of view of, of the humanity of the situation, mm, I yeah. think, is, is really important. And there's those things like parenting through separation, yep. which is yep. that three or four hour course that you do fantastic. on your own. It's a fantastic yeah. course. Right, you I, did I it? I highly, uh -huh. highly recommend it. What was I good actually about did it, it quite late on. I wish I'd done it earlier. Mm. Um, but just really, um, really informative, great frame of reference. I, mm. I came it's away with practical oh, strategies. Yeah, really, really good. How do you good. deal? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I guess kind of how you can be constructive in your relationship when you're talking about um, mm. children. Uh, what, what, I guess what, you, what is going to be good for you and what's going to be good for your kids and what isn't. Mm. Because there's things that you it's do, you think, oh, the, you yeah. know, I probably shouldn't be doing that. But you go to a course at the right time. I yeah. found that was a, a really good course. And I went, oh, I definitely am not going to do that yeah. now. And I definitely am going to do that. Because yeah. I understand why that, that felt a bit funny mm. when I did it. Yeah. But actually, now I understand that I, you know, yeah. and we, we can't be perfect. You can't do it perfectly, yeah. no. but just get get all the help you can. And I would define that as one of the traps. Yeah. Launching into your separation and the division of property without thinking about the kids and the impact on the kids and the parenting through separation is critical. So as with the people are thinking about separation, need to know about the, the consequences in terms of uh, property division yeah. uh, because it might help them make a sensible decision when they're under the stress of a difficult situation. Mm. The best advice on how it's affecting your children yeah. is important because otherwise you're going to blur the boundaries. Yeah. You're going to have someone who's bargaining with the children, yeah. uh, bargaining a property with the children, and that's awful. That's just, just disastrous yeah, yeah. and horrible behaviour. Because the belligerence is, is one of the things, yeah. especially in a, in a relationship where there's been an unequal in a power balance, the yeah. belligerence of one party cows the other party. Mm -hmm. And the lawyer's letter to, to which, either party yeah. Is a, is a great tool because if that letter, letter is going to turn up in court later on, then the judge is going to look at, look at it yeah. and say, Mr. Henderson, you've said something to this person that, that's just wrong. You must have known it was wrong at the time. And so as a lawyer writing that letter, I know it's going to be scrutinised mm, yeah. and I'm going to be fair. Mm. Pe people, one of the things people, th that you, you mentioned the most expensive lawyer in town. Occasionally I've had people say to me, oh, I hope so-and-so goes to a rubbish lawyer. And I say, no. Yeah. Yeah. I say, I want so-and-so to go to the best, second best lawyer in town. <laughs> and because, because, because a really good lawyer will give you the same advice yeah. that I will give yeah. him or her, the so, same yeah. advice I'm giving you. Yeah. You will be operating, both of you knowing what the real situation is. Yeah. So dealing with that belligerence yeah. is, mm. is what's important. And, it, and lots of relationships found are because of an unfair power balance. And, I can give you the five things that happen afterwards, which are the things that are tactics that go wrong. Okay, the pattern of behaviour is that the first thing that crops up is 
personal belligerence, personal one person pressuring the other. Pressure, pressure, pressure. It can be it can be benign, but it's pressure mm -hmm. uh, and 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 heavy pressure. Um, the guilt trip or the my parents want or your parents or this is what I've done for you. Those things are pressure as as much but not quite as awful as the um, my friends are going to come around and beat you up. Thing. So the personal pressure is the first tactic that, that tends to get used. The second one is financial, yeah. uh, uh, closing, freezing the accounts, um, withdrawing the income, taking the money and, and, and saying that you spent it all so that it's not there and you're not going to get any anyway. Uh, and that's a similar sort of pressure but it's financial. The third one is kids. Um, suddenly someone who probably always thought that he or she was the parent of the year but was the one who worked and only saw them in the weekend is suddenly becomes the parent of the year and wants to see them half of the and time. I want them one week, I want equality and so forth. Talks to the kids about it, uh, threatens to take the children. You're a crap parent and I'm going to have the I'm going to go to OT and report on you. Um, you 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 raised your hand to so and so, um, so that the children is the third avenue of attack. Mm. And the third, the next one is, uh, I earned all the money here. None of this is yours. Uh, you sat on your butt and uh, I already supported I you. you. So, <laughs> so I, I wanted you to go back to work. You, yep, you got all of that. That's the fourth one. The fifth yeah. one is you're mad. Um, oh, everyone, that one quite a lot? everyone knows you're mad. Your uncle um, is a schizophrenic, and there's the, the, the a third and cousin who committed yeah. suicide. It's bad blood in your family, and, and yeah. I'm going to have you committed. Mad or you're um, talking to me, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mad if the cat fit. Um, mad and controlling is another one. You know, the, these. Um, you know, you only have to. I, I find say to some people once. You know, you're controlling. You have to control everything, mm. and to make them. You know, it does silence them. It's a brilliant yeah, tool. Yeah, They'll do everything to yeah. show that they are the opposite. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's pretty awful. You really have to yeah, get that help to stand in your own kind of power and be like, hang on a minute. No, I'm not. And that help comes from the personal counselling that helps you cope with the yeah, demoralising yeah. situation yeah. and the legal counselling that says, no, yeah. if, if, if he does that again, we'll, I'll get a protection order for you. The court is not going to give him 50% share of this child's life. The court's going to approach it on this basis and and knowing and mm. feeling confident in the legal advice because you've been to a counsellor who's mm. helped you get your head straight. Yeah. Those are the defences against those tactics. Yeah. And, and, and applying for spousal maintenance against the financial yeah. pressure. So Absolutely. it's really useful to know mm. what all these strategies yeah. are. The, the because law then you is don't there. take it so personally. Yeah. Yeah. You go, oh, well, my law, you know, we're familiar yeah. with these strategies. These are yeah. all strategies we've seen time yeah. and time again. It's what the judges say in the cases yeah. a lot of the time. The, we are familiar yeah. with this the strategy. Says, or someone, I'm, I'm going to, no, I don't want to work in that high powered career anymore yeah. I'm going to take you off because I'm so oh, yes, that's stressed right. yes. you know? yeah. and you, so you won't you know you can try and apply for you know maintenance of child support but you won't get anything yeah, yeah. the courts have seen that one before <laughs> uh, and I think there's judges yeah. are quite smart people yeah. <laughs> generally yeah. 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 Um, we're going to have a few podcasts on those sorts of things mm -hmm. you know can they really take the house yeah. Um, so that should you yeah. stay in the house who gets the same yeah, yeah. Um, how, yeah. what do I do for money so those yeah. will be all um, yeah, yeah. Uh, How can I unfreeze the frozen bank accounts? Mm -hmm. How can I get this capital out because I need it to fix my yeah, car? This. Yep, don't don't go to a court. Go to go to a mediator mm -hmm. as, as you did, and uh, that c circumvents a whole lot of um, uh, battling and expense caused. Get agreement from the other mm -hmm. side to go at an early stage to a mediator. Get a good mediator. Yeah. It's it's the best investment okay. of your and money what, is yeah, getting I mean, a good lawyer yeah. who will help you with those yeah. things. We're going to do a session just yeah. on mediations yeah. and Shelley will be able to talk yeah. about her experience. <laughs> yeah. But yours is overall? Oh, positive. I do. I, um, as a personal point, the night before uh, the mediation, I talked to Stuart and I said, I don't think we should go to mediation because we're so far apart in what we wanted. And the very wise Stuart said to me, it is never a waste to go to mediation. Yeah. Even if you don't get a solution on that day or an agreement on that day, you'll be closer than you were before. But I thought it was a complete waste of time. Yeah. So I think if, you, if you've if you got two people that are motivated to mediate, right? Yeah. I think Which you usually are. You're yeah. paying half each yeah. for the mediator. Yeah. They're not cheap. No. You've done a whole lot of preparation yeah. work. You don't just walk in off mm -hmm. the street, hey? Yeah. And, and you want it over. Are you sort yeah. of imagining it over yeah. a little bit <laughs> yeah. at that stage? And, yeah. and, and okay, um, I'm, I'm glad that that advice was good advice. Um, but one of the things mediators say, 
which I guess is the sort of thing I was basing that on, is mm. that once you've once you've had your mediation started, you, once your mediation's underway, start at nine o'clock. Deal with deal with some anger and so forth. Work through the issues. Start to clarify things and identify uh, what the issues are. A, a really good mediator said to me once, "And there's a time in a mediation when magic happens, <laughs> and it's it's the build up. Right. It's the it's the it's the it's opportunity the for the people to. <laughs> well, you've got to be careful of the exhaustion, but it's the opportunity of the of the people to talk to their lawyers, yeah. and to talk to the mediator, and just consider talk everything that's there. Too. So that, as you say, this is for another point, but mm. um, it it's it really. I, I I talk about that because my advice that the best investment is invest, early investment in a lawyer and a good lawyer who can organize something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. It, agreed. It, it, yeah. Agreed. Totally. Now, I think uh, we go on to our uh, last section uh, segment, which is called the best question ever. What's the best thing a client has ever said to you? It's very hard for a lawyer to say, um, say no or, or give advice not to do something because okay. Um, the lawyer. It's not our call. No, our, our, it's not our call. But also, the, our, we self mythologize as these gladiators who are going to go out and win battles for our clients and yeah. get the gratitude of our clients and. A bit That's of money. what you want to do. It, you and you, help you want to be a hero. Yeah. Um, save the day and and so yeah. on and so forth. There's there's not many feelings that are better. I had an old fellow who came to me once, and this isn't a family court. It's a general uh, one, but. He had battles. He had battles with his neighbours. He had battles with the people who were administering the little set of houses that he lived in. He had battles with the district council, and he. All of these battles had a had a degree of. I could understand why he was fighting them. There was a degree of bad behaviour, often on both sides, and I said to him, I let him talk to me. It, it took an hour and a bit to explain these things. When he got to the end of the explanation, I said to him. Is there anything else I need to know? I, I think I have a good understanding, and I'm ready to give you advice. He said, "Thank you," <laughs> and um, and he had all these battles he wanted to fight. Yeah. And I said to him, "Well, here's my advice: stop, stop now. Don't take this any further. This battle is likely to end up that way. This one you might win, but blah blah blah. This one, um, I think honours are even there, and you're likely to get as as much as you give." And I said, "So stop." Do it. Do this. Do that. But but stop living your life by fighting everyone around you. And he said, "Do you know? I've been to several lawyers, and I thought you bugger, you've been to several lawyers before you came to me." Um, he said, "I've been to several lawyers, and no one has told me that. And I think you're right." No. <laughs> now I. It, it, it wasn't hard to say to him, don't do this, don't do yeah. that. But when you're a lawyer looking at, yeah. at, 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 mm. at the opportunity to win a battle for someone... We'll prove that guy's it, an idiot it's, and that one's... It, yeah. it, it's hard to say, yes, I think I can win this, yeah. but there's a 60% chance I won't. Um, my brilliance will get you there um, at, at my hourly yeah. rate and so yeah. forth. Uh, now, it's, it's harder, it's to, harder to say, that. it's harder to say, no, don't yeah. do this. Yeah. Anyway, ah, so that's yeah. the best, of, nice. best, yeah. best question ever, also best maybe answer the best ever. advice to a client. As yeah. Well, well okay. sometimes, but also, no, no, no. Sometimes you've got to do battle. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you've got to do battle to, to, to beat that belligerence that's yeah. coming well, from someone and, and yeah. to even the scales up. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes it, it takes a lot of courage to recognize that, that, that justice will only be served if you take these difficult, expensive yeah. steps and get to that point. Yeah. Anyway, well, thank you, Stuart. I hope uh, we're obviously going to have to get you back on uh, in, for future sessions, um, and especially that one on mediation yeah, will, be, um, will yeah. be awesome. But, um, yeah, thank you for joining us, and it's been, uh, yeah, it's been a privilege. And, um, thank you for the opportunity. This has so. been Divorce Cafe, um, and we hope you have enjoyed it and maybe pick something up. Tune in. Uh, to another episode. If you're interested, um, have a look at the article on the website. There's more information there. And um, yeah, see you next time.